Today, Team Kesteva is reviewing all things related to the FE exam, including guidelines, information, scoring, as well as what to expect when you arrive on test day. So if you're an upcoming test taker, sit back and soak up the knowledge. So here you are, coming to the end, unfortunately, of your college career, or maybe you're a recent graduate of college. The Fundamentals of Engineering exam, the FE exam, is generally your first step in the process to becoming a licensed professional engineer. It's designed for recent graduates and students who are close to finishing an undergrad engineering degree from an accredited program. So, the FE is a computer-based exam administered year-round at an NCES-approved Pearson testing site. If you log on to the NCES website, there are tools in order for you to locate the closest test site closest to you. So, I would suggest heading over there and taking a look through for yourself to see which is closest and best for your test taking. In order to register for the exam, you will need to create your own My NCES account that is personal to you. Here is a list of NCES provided steps in order to sign up and successfully go take the FE exam. And I think this registration process is very well summed up and is way better than I can do in actually explaining any simpler than this. So take a quick second, pause the video if you'd like, and take a look at what's been provided by the NCES. If you're looking to get in contact with Pearson View regarding your test site or the NCES about registration and any other questions you may have, check the description down below. I've actually left a link to all of the contact information for both parties. When you do register for an FE exam, there is $175 fee associated with signing up. Some licensing boards, depending on the state or where you are in the world, may require you to file a separate application and pay an additional fee. So depending on where you are, check with your licensing board because things may be slightly different. It's not the same for everyone. The FE exam includes 110 questions and you're supposed to complete them in an allotted time of six hours. But that whole six hours is not technically allotted to you for test taking only. The NCES actually breaks it up into four procedures. Reading and signing a non-disclosure agreement, roughly two minutes of time, very quick. Next, a quick tutorial, teaching you the tools, the buttons of the program in order you to take the test. There's abilities for you to go back and answer unanswered questions and how to move and navigate around the test while you're in it, as well as how you navigate the informational PDF that is provided to you during the exam. Again, there is nothing physical besides the computer with which you're taking the exam. So that PDF will not be paper and bound. It will be digital as well as the test. That tutorial is roughly eight minutes long. I would suggest you use all of that eight minutes for yourself. You're going to be nervous, but you're also gonna be ready to just dive in and take the test. Take that full eight minutes to breathe and also make sure you fully understand the mechanism that is the exam. There's nothing worse than being able to answer questions, but potentially getting one wrong because of user error for the program. It's a very real thing and it's something you need to be careful of. Then we got the big boy, the actual exam itself. Five hours and 20 minutes is allotted for you to answer those 110 multiple choice questions. Halfway through, you are allotted a 25 minute break. I do not believe that you have to take the full 25 minutes. It is just time for you to grab some food, grab some water, collect yourself, and then to head back in to think critically for another couple of hours. Again, don't underestimate that break. Take advantage of it. Use the bathroom, duh. The NCES reference handbook is the only reference material that you are allowed during the exam. For preparation prior to the exam, you can purchase a hardcover one or you can download a free PDF version. So make sure you take advantage of that. Personally, I think that you should go with the PDF version since that is the only thing allotted to you. You want to feel most comfortable and have the same experience that you were while you were studying. And it's free. The NCES also provides practice exams that you can purchase. If you'd like to know more about that, check out the NCES website and take a look through their exam prep materials. Now, on the day of the exam, you are technically instructed to arrive 30 minutes before your exam time. However, I would suggest pushing that more to like an hour. That's just personally, if something were to go wrong um, on your travels on the way there, that you can have that buffer time in order not to panic at all. 
you know me from my previous video that uh, that didn't go so well for me. Um, if you're curious, take a look in the thumbnail above and uh, check out my crazy story of my first FDA exam experience. When you arrive, you'll need to present some type of physical photo ID. Most of the time, a driver's license is just fine. Please note that digital IDs are not acceptable. So no matter how technically savvy you are, some of this stuff is still pretty old school, so stick to physical IDs. Now, on the day of the exam, here's a little check sheet of the following provided by the NCES website for all of you. You'll want that appointment confirmation letter, an NCES approved calculator. We've talked about that before. I got my beauty still here side by side with me today. Like we just said, an acceptable form of identification and approved comfort items. All right, pass rates. This is something if you have not taken the time to take a look at, it may or may not be something that is beneficial to you in your studies and preparation for the exam. What it may do is give you peace of mind in understanding how difficult this exam has been for your peers. And that information may be useful to you in determining how much or how little you need to prepare and study. Here are the following pass rates for all of the disciplines. Now, as you can see in the chart, provides the exam type followed by volume, which is how many students actually sat for that specific exam. Then you will see pass rate followed by format. CBT is for all different disciplines, which is just computer-based uh, testing. And then you have availability, which you will notice nowadays is year round. Um, back when I was finishing up school, it was actually only uh, allowed twice a year. And that was because you had the choice between taking and sitting for a paper test or they were starting to integrate the computer-based test. So you had an option. And finally, they give you last updated. So this is telling you when this information was last updated based on that six month chunk of information uh, that they pulled from. Please note that this information is based on three pieces of criteria. The first being that all of this information was accumulated from first time test takers only. All test takers were from an AEC or ABET accredited engineering program, and they all took the FE exam within 12 months of graduating college. So for us civils out there, as you can see, 70% pass rate, that's not too bad. That's uh, more in the favor of getting through this thing and moving on to the next steps uh, of your professional career. But I don't think by any means that means you can slack off in preparing for this. It's still a test that is challenging your last four years uh, of college education. So don't blow it off by any means. All right, team, that's it for today and all things FE exam related. If you love today's content, please consider giving a like to the video down below. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. Join the team, join this community of engineers from around the world. This is Rich with Team Kestaba. See everyone next time. Later.